I'm going to attempt to learn C++ programming in only one week. Will I succeed? Let's find out, shall we? Whoa! Slow down. Before we get started, let me set the goals and explain the context. My goal this week is to make a game using only code and no game engine. To help me through this journey, I'll be learning everything using YouTube videos and a C++ Udemy course. Oh, and I wanted to be clear. I have never touched a line of code in my life. So I'm really starting from scratch. The goal of day one was to learn the basics, so I opened this four hour long video and started going through this big chunk of theory. And holy glowing poop, this was pretty tough to swallow. I was never a fan of theory, I'd rather learn through doing. But in this case, I felt like it was better to have a global understanding of what tools are at my disposal and in what context I should use these tools. At the end of this first day, I was however capable of writing my very first program. Oh yeah, I'm officially a programmer now. I obviously then proceeded of writing my second program. DO IT! Anyways, apart from the two mini programs I wrote, uh, this day was pretty boring. I have a very basic understanding how this all works and I think it's time to start working with actual code and apply the stuff I learned in a game dev context. To help me through this, I used this C++ Fundamentals for Game Programming course. I found this course on Udemy and we'll be talking more about this course later on in the video. Anyways. Through this course, I managed to learn quite a few things. First, I learned how to display a window. And then I displayed the same window, but in red. Yeah, I know, red window, crazy stuff, right? Finally, I proceeded to make a window with an actual object inside. A ball. Because we all know it wouldn't be a Floki video without some juicy ball. So I added movement to the ball and I added a mean evil cube that would kill the ball if you touch it. And this was where I started realizing how much I will actually miss the glorious Unreal Engine. Because if you're writing all the code yourself, some simple stuff can become pure pain. For example, let's compare how to code collisions in visual code to how easy it is to add them in Unreal Engine. So in visual code, you would create an invisible rectangle around your ball. Then you use the coordinates of the top line, the bottom line, the left line and the right line of the said rectangle. Subtract them with the perpendicular counterparts to define a point where they cross each other. And that's what gives you the location of the different corners of your rectangle. Once you have the location of all corners, you do the same for the other object that you want to check the collision with. And finally, you create an if statement where if one of the rectangles enters any space of the other rectangle, it will execute something like, for example, writing game over on the screen. And now, in Unreal Engine. Yeah, fair to say, a game engine definitely makes your life way easier. Today was probably one of the biggest steps in my C++ journey. And that's because I actually started to code and dive into some of the math that comes with it. I understood how some things worked that I used all the time in Unreal Engine without ever thinking twice about it. It felt very enlightening. On day 3, I started with the actual game that I wanted to create this week. I was going to recreate the Chrome browser dino game that everyone knows and loves. So I found a sprite of the actual dino. I then added that sprite to my code and made it appear in the window. Shortly after, I made him able to jump and then came the animation part. Having had a bad experience with animation a few weeks back, I really wasn't excited about this part. But it turns out, in 2D, it's actually stupidly easy. So 2D game animations are like a flipbook. You basically just cycle through a bunch of sprites fast enough to make it seem like it's moving. And since I already had all the needed sprites for my dino, I got my character animated in less than an hour. So now we have our very own little jumping dino. But as we all know, dinos are extinct. So let's add something to make our little dino cease to exist. 
And what better object to make stuff cease to exist than my trusty axe Liva? And voila! We have a rotating axe that flies towards our dino. However, now we have to create a collision event because otherwise the axe just flies through our Mr. Dino. And I mean, this should be fairly easy since I already did it with my circle and cube game. Yeah, it uh, <laughs> it didn't work. Don't ask me why, I have no idea. It just froze the whole program as soon as I tried to run it with collisions. But you know what, that's going to be a problem for another time because I'm off to bed. Yeah, day 4 was pretty boring from a storytelling perspective because I took the entire day to clean up my code. I did this by simply making my overall code shorter by introducing arrays, for loops and even made some of my own functions. This on one hand made my code nicer to look at but it also made it possible for me to tweak my game by simply changing a few line of codes. Let me get this straight, so you know where the mistake is. Yep. You know what the mistake is. Yep. So technically, you could fix the mistake. That makes sense to me. So, fix the mistake. No. Anyways, don't worry, I won't bore you with all the boring details. Day 5 was big. On day five, the game actually came together. So first, I managed to get my collisions working. Even if I have absolutely no idea what I did to make it work, I changed some random stuff and it just seemed to kind of start working. But uh, I mean, I'll take it. And thanks to the now working collisions, we finally have a game over condition. I also introduced a collectible to the game. I present to you... The Yellow Watermelon. Along with this collectible, I made a point system. For every second you survive, you get one point, and if you manage to get the Yellow Watermelon, you get 10 points. Now, even though the game is coming together nicely, there's still one big problem. I don't have a destroy and respawn system. For now, the items fly by, and even if you don't see them anymore, they're still moving forever to the left. And since I was pretty spoiled from using Unreal Engine, I thought I would simply despawn the axe once it moves out of the screen and spawn in a new axe somewhere up ahead. However, it turns out that making a spawn and despawn system is way more complicated than in a game engine. Although this wasn't that big of a problem because of the one thing I really like about coding. There is always multiple solutions to a problem. So instead of making a spawning and despawning system, I would just simply move the already existing axe to the front of the scene as soon as it reaches the end of the window, kind of teleporting the already existing axe back to the front. I did the same with the yellow watermelon and voila, we have an endlessly looping game. So yeah, the game works, but we still have quite a lot to do. There's still some stuff lacking. For starters, the game doesn't get harder over time. It's just the same axe flying at the same speed towards the same dino, and that's boring. So to spice things up, I made it so that the longer you're alive, the more axes fly towards you and the faster everything gets. I also made it so that the axes get moved back to the front by a random distance to make it less repetitive and more interesting. I also added some sound using our favorite site just Gah. and the final spice to the mix i added another way to dodge the axis and that is the duck ability no not that kind of duck this kind of duck now i will admit that i was a bit lazy with this one instead of making a new collision size for the duck ability i instead just gave the character a half a second immunity frame when he uses this ability The game is basically done. The only thing it now needs is a little bit of um, shininess. Because again, it wouldn't be a Floki video without some... So yeah, I added a glow to the character, added a red dangerous glow to the axis, and also added a yellow golden glow to the yellow watermelons. I also made a menu, a moving background, but something was still missing, something vital. Something that would make this game addicting. I'm talking about loot boxes. I of course meant to say music. Music was the right answer. And so I found and added a pixeled version of one of the best songs ever created. And now we have this addictive masterpiece. Oh, 
by the way, if you want to know how I made my very first game, a 3D game, in only 7 days, click here. Come on, do it, click. <laughs>